Right, members. A happy new year to you. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> seems ages ago, doesn't it? Anyway, um, good evening and welcome to the Democracy Committee meeting. Um, before we get uh, into the agenda, may I take this opportunity to advise you that we're not expecting the fire alarm to sound tonight. So if it does, please remain seated and Mrs. Matthews will assess the situation and give further instructions on the evacuation of the building, if appropriate. Tonight's proceedings will be webcast by the Council, but if anyone is intending to record these proceedings, can you please let me know now? I ask this question not to stop you, but merely to ensure that members and other members of the public in the room uh, know what, that it's taking place. Thank you. If we can move to the agenda, um, and apologies for absence. We've had apologies from Councillors Bolton, Mrs. Hinder, and Lewins. Bolton, Hinder, and Lewins. Uh, notification of substitute members. Councillor Garton. Uh, on behalf of Councillor Bolton, please, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor English. Thank you very much. Any others? No? Good. Um, urgent items. There are no uh, urgent items on the papers. Um, notification of visiting members. <laughs> okay. It's busy, busy tonight. Everybody's busy tonight. <laughs> um, disclosures by members and officers. None? Good. Disclosures of lobbying. No. Ah, Councillor English has... I've been lobbied uh, directly, yes, by uh, Councillor Willis on, every, on uh, the last two items on the agenda, but not on the, on the um, community governance review, but on the other two items, um, the review of outside bodies and the Upper Medway Internal Drainage Board, would you believe? Uh, um, his, his interests spread widely, widely, and um, also um, I suppose that I've, I also would declare the st statements made at SPST last night to amount to lobbying on the item of review of outside bodies. Thank you very much. Um, to consider whether any item should be taken in private because of possible disclosure of exempt information, we have no pay yellow pages, so... Okay. Um, minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of December. Um, go through them. I trust every member that's got the agendas have read the, read the, uh, the minutes. Well, I have read them, but I wasn't here for that meeting, so I can't tell you whether I'm they're correct or not. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, right, the minutes. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Ring. <laughs> right, we'll go through page one of the minutes. Has everybody read that one? Thank you. Page two of the minutes. Thank you. Let me sign those. Correct. Right. Where are we? Um, presentations of petitions. There are none. And questions and answers from members of the public. There are none. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell everybody's in New Year mode. <laughs> All right. Okay. And um, on. Page three, we've got the committee work program, um, which, page three, which I trust you've got in front of you. Um, so, the, okay, the first item on that is review of outside bodies. And can I ask, um, yeah, sorry? Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm ahead of myself. 
Yeah, sorry. Any, any comments on, on the uh, work program at all? Okay. Agenda item 11, then the community work program. Um, Angela, would you like to go on with that, please? Um, thank you, Chairman. So, um, members, we're now on agenda item 12, community governance reviews. So, as you rec will recall, for the, and for those of you who are visiting members, um, the committee, when we looked at the name change for Balming, um, at that point, there were some concerns raised about community governance reviews, and I was asked to pr produce a report. Um, the report before you sets out the process for conducting a community governance review. And just to um, confirm, this concerns our local community governance arrangements and includes things such as in the electoral arrangements of parishes, their size and warding, as well as names. So that's the kind of things that come under a community governance review. I would like at this point to um, make you aware we have not received any requests from parishes or ward councillors for changes. Um, I did te speak to the elections team about our current um, arrangements to see if there were any areas that if we were to conduct a review where we might um, look. There, just to let you know, there are two parish councils who have elections out of sync with other parishes in their ward. So that's an area we could look at if we're going to do a review. Um, and in, when you look at the population change in the borough, we have 10 parishes who could have an increase in councillors and two who could be reduced based on their electorate. But again, I'm, I would like to reiterate, no one's requested this, but this is from a review. And there are also three parishes which may benefit from changes to their boundaries. So this is where there's areas of confusion. So they, they look like they're in one ward and they're in another. Um, so the community governance review would have resource and staffing implications. They're quite significant because everyone affected would have to be consulted. A flow chart has been included at Appendix A and an illustrative timetable. So that would give you an idea of the process. If the committee did believe there was a need to conduct a governance review, it would be most appropriate if a work, uh, working group was set up to look at the initial terms of reference, so which parishes would you include, what would you look at if that was considered by a working group. Um, however, I would like to reiterate, I do not believe there is a need for review across the borough, which was the original intention when this was first suggested, because um, there, there isn't the evidence of significant change. However, there are pockets where we may want to look at. Um, so really, I'll put it to you to decide your next action, and I'm happy to take questions. Councillor English, yes. When I was um, first on this council, um, I rather rashly um, lo was looking at the arrangements for the five North Downs parishes, which, as you probably know, are so small they are parishes, but they don't have a parish council. And yours truly for oh, wouldn't it be marvellous if we had a grouping order, which is one form of community governance review, which would have essentially created five wards of a combined parish, and it would have given them enough people to have a parish council and a clerk and actually be an official consultee on planning applications and all the other things. What I hadn't done was actually speak to anyone in those five parish areas as to whether they thought it was a good idea to, to do this. And it was like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Stop. Finsbury, I'm oh, sorry, Frinstead, they're practically French. Well, I, and someone from Hucking said, I haven't spoken to some, anyone from Worms Hill since Michael Nightingale was a young lad. Yeah, if, for those of you who know <coughs> Michael Nightingale, he, he was a very senior and very long-serving borough councillor at the time. Um, so the, so the point I have to say is a community governance review would be very unwise because we've had them, but first, but it, because they're so widespread as to what you can review, you can look at name changes, you can look at numbers, you can look at boundaries, you, it, it really, they really need to come forward from a demand from below. And, and as far as I know, um, and the officer can tell me, other than the Barmin and Teeson name change, which was a request from below, I believe. It's, that's right, isn't it? Um, we've had no requests from those parishes that have too few 
and councillors, would I be right in saying that when the, the, the most recent, when several of the parish councils that don't have enough members were asked whether they wanted an increase in parish mem number, parish council numbers, their response was, we're finding it hard enough to get the numbers of parish councillors we've got now, so if we ended up having an increase, we'd only end up carrying num considerable numbers of vacancies. Can the officers tell me whether that was the typical response? So I'd have to actually go away and check that. What I would say is there, have been, there hasn't been a demand. So the last demands, I'll put in the report at paragraph 2.10. So on 24th of October, we had um, Broomsfield and Kingswood and Sutton Balance request to change their numbers from 9 to 11, which was rejected. And then in February 2015, we had another request um, which was from 9 to 11, which was agreed. So we have, we have had change requests come in, but we've had nothing recently. Um, I do know well, you all know as ward councillors that there, there are difficulties when we hold elections um, in filling parish vacancies. Kingswood, people might wonder why the decision was different. Yeah. Um, am I correct in saying that the reason for the change was that on the first occasion they hadn't supplied us with any evidence and on the second occasion they did? Councillor, Mr Shrink. Um, right, I'm bound to always put something in the mixing bowl to see what I come out with. I get really, really stressed here. I'm not a parish. So did you ask me? Would I ever have thought of coming forward with this recommendation? I wasn't. I wasn't here that night and I was in hospital. So I can only gather what I'm hearing now and, and what I've read. At the end of the day, I don't think it was meant for what people wanted or what parishes wanted. And to be honest with you, there's got to come a time within this council, we know exactly what we're doing, how many people exist, how many houses, what's going on, what do we pay out for, what don't we pay out for. Yet you can do that through this, Clive. Well, you don't pay me no money. You don't pay my parish any money to run anything because we don't exist. So all I'm saying is I'd like to have a bit more of an investigation. I'm not saying tonight go in and do what you want or don't make yourself work that you've not got, but you've got to be fair on everybody in this parish. I've got a ward, like I deal with this side of Northumberland Road, and the other parish board member goes that side. But, you know, it, it's just so stupid. It's not for Maidstone Borough Council wards or Maidstone Borough Council functions. And it cannot affect anything we do as a local authority. That has to be reviewed by the Local Government Boundary Commission in terms of war boundaries. And yeah, but you were talking about, you were talking yeah. about borough council boundaries, councillors, um, and, and what it can't do, and what it also can't do in any way at all is look at local government finance. The only thing it could do is if um, there was, a, was if there was a demand within the council or within the public to solve the issue of, uh, of dual rating or, or uh, lopsided representation by saying, yes, we're going to parish the whole of Maidstone, and a community governance review could do that, but I don't think there's a, an appetite in most of urban Maidstone for doing that. I would say, if we, if we were to do a community governance review, we would need to define what we're doing a review of. And that would mean um, a lot of preparation work. Um, what we can't do is examine our electoral cycle, our electoral boundaries, how many councillors Maidstone Borough Council has, the financial arrangements between Maidstone and the parishes or anything else, or, unless we address that by creating new parish councils or abolishing them. That's all it can do. I'll come back, come back, Councillor Ring.
I, I'm yeah. agreeing that we shouldn't be doing this work for that precise reason you just said. Yeah. Just one sec. Can, um, I, yeah. Thank you. So, Councillor Ring, just to clarify, the gift of looking at the ward boundaries is not ours, so that sits up above. Parishes, whether that be creating new ones, so I know, for example, some councils have looked at, for example, their urban area and said, we want to parish it, how to go about That could be part of a community governance review. Um, the ones where they've been successful is where, um, from personal experience, is where you've got associations, residents' associations, and other uh, structure who've been fighting for it. So they've, they've come forward saying, we want to be a parish, we want, and, and that tends to be, because you have to have public in favour of it. So, and all of, which is where I was suggesting, if there is an appetite to do anything, it's probably that working group piece to go, actually, what, what is the appetite for changing Maidstone and, and where do we see it if we believe there is one? Um, yeah, idea then to clear up on what's going on here, because I think we're talking cross purposes, Clive and I, is you're looking at doing another um, public survey asking questions. And we, no, 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 but when we're ready for the next one, we wouldn't be giving people the opportunity to be able to change their communities. Um, under the legislation, a community can petition us. So if we get a petition in asking for community governance reviews, saying so anyone can do that, um, so there is always an opportunity for people to demand change. So this is an, um, an officer report saying do this, do that. That's really not the case. As you said, I, you, I believe you weren't at the meeting. Um, it come out of when we had the discussion on bombing about changing the ward name, which, again, we're allowed to do, so we talked about that. There was a discussion, exactly like you've raised, about, but what about this ward? It kind of crosses over, and it's not clear. There's a whole... They, for, they gave an example of a street where it basically cuts in half across two wards. That was raised, but that isn't within the gift of this, but a parish would be. If you had a parish like that, that would be the sort of thing you could look at. Um, but all this report is doing is saying, this is what community governance review could do. This is how you would undertake it, just to give everyone an understanding. Because when it was raised, people didn't know what could and couldn't be done. And then it's really up to this committee what you want to do next with it. But you're right, if we did do a review, we would have to do public consultation with those people that are affected. That would be part of it. I just look at it. I've got um, all them houses in my ward, which, which is quite a few, it would be down to me as a local councillor to go and knock every door and say, do you fancy being a parish? And I know 90% of them people will go, what's a parish then? <laughs> How much is it going to cost me? Um, and I don't think it would happen, but, but that's beside the point. So, that, so that's cleared that up. Um, yeah. Councillor Perry, you've, wait, you've waited a, a long time patiently there. I wished I'd been on Star Trek and I could just say, beam me up, Scotty, because yeah. I, I, having listened to this debate, I'm more confused than when I read the working paper, I have to say. Yeah. Sorry, Angela, that wasn't fair. Um, um, I actually agree with Clive. Sorry, Councillor English. I have to um, I'm a parish person. Uh, no, I, well, no, I can see Councillor English is not a parish councillor. I don't think, are you? Really? No. Yeah, exactly. You still have a lot to do with, don't, don't you? Yeah. Are you kidding me or what? Be honest, be honest. <laughs> Public meeting. Councillor Ring, okay, as I've been asked by Councillor Ring, I am not a parish councillor. I've been for three years. Yeah, I know. My only involvement is as a trustee. Yeah, yeah. Continue, John. <laughs> yeah, Councillor Perry. <laughs> so, so, um, I, I'm quite simple. I, I, I think this is a bit of a... I don't think we need to do this. I, I, I really think that that's absolutely right. It would be a bit of a sledgehammer to crack a nut, I think. Um, the, the thing, if you want, if, I think in most cases, if, if, you, if there's a, a mood to change, it comes, as counselling we said, from the bottom up, really. Um, and um, so I, I, I don't think there's a need to do this at all. Um, the only issue, I think this came up because there were some anomalies about the parish boundaries. 
It doesn't happen so much in rural areas, but I think there's a toggle bombing maybe issue. But, but I'm not, it's not a big deal, I don't think, to be honest. I don't think anybody's ever sort of got concern about it. Um, uh, and, and a governance review was carried out of uh, a community governance review of changing a small area of, of, of Tovel to Lewes, and that did take place, and all the consultation went through. But that came from below, and, and it followed the procedure. Um, just like when Cops Heath, Downswood, and Tovel Parish Councils were created in the first place, you know, it has to come from below. I mean, we're, they are predominantly rural, there's no doubt about that, but they can be urban, there's no doubt about that as well. Um, whether you want them or not is for the people to decide. It's, um, I wouldn't push it one way or the other. I mean, in the rural areas, they evolved because in a little bit of history in some of that Staplehurst, they came out of the sort of church vestry meetings and the, and the use of the poor rate. So they distributed the poor rate, which is the precursor of the precept that you, you, we, we levy today. So there is a bit of history. And in my parish, which I am actually quite proud of, um, we are an 1894 parish. So we were set up, and there is a statutory. Um, these are statutory bodies, and people tend to forget that, I think. And certainly we are one of the original ones, and we came out of those um, early poor rate meetings that were, took place in the 19th century. So there is a history here, but I'm not forcing anybody to, to, to totally parish uh, Maidstone. And I think if the only issue that comes up from time to time, I think, are the numbers of councillors. And I think it's already been said, actually, it's not easy always to get parish council. We, we have 15 in Staplehurst, and we just about struggle to get 15. But it is, you know, this is probably the only issue that comes up on a regular basis. You don't need to have a, a governance group for that, and uh, it's just it's something that comes up from the bottom. So I would say we just note, I personally think we note it, and just move on. Thank you. Councillor Fissenden, you, you did signal to speak. Um, yes, I did. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes, just to um, really alliterate what Clive and John have said, and I'm really not for this. And also, I just wanted to know that if it was a yes, what would the cost implications be on this extortionate? <laughs> so. Okay, there well, was some good, good soundings there. I mean, can, can I take a sort of vote on it? I, mean, I think Councillor Perry actually moved to take no further action. Uh, and I think you moved it. <laughs> Councillor Vizard has seconded it. So can, can we actually take a vote to not proceed with the review? Count. Yep. yep. And against? It's one, thank you. We move, move on to um, item 13, which is a review of certain outside bodies, which is an update. That's okay. Well, as I say, we'll go on to item uh, 13 now, which is a review of the outside bodies that um, certain people have actually made some concerns over those that were uh, omitted, and um, we've given the opportunity to review that. Councillor Ring. Oh. Sorry, sorry, I've just been advised it was Councillor Vizard that wished wish to speak, and then yourself. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, we're on. Um, 
On the list of outside bodies we've got, Mr Chairman, I must uh, just declare an interest in the Medway Valley Line Steering Group because I'm the Parish Council representative on that body. For Barby. For Barby. Thank you. Now, Councillor Ring. I've got nothing to declare. Um, right. I've, I've, I've looked at this and all the plava that we had last time and the plava the time before. My colleague isn't here tonight, so let's not have no playing around and giggling to and fro. If, if you want to bring these back, I suggest we go back to the beginning. But I, we had a criteria list. We had a criteria list and we sat here and we went through that. So if you want these all back, then I'm ever so sorry we've got to go back to the beginning. So I would like to pass that um, recommendation and ask him for a second person to do it because this is going to be a joke again. Well, you, you, you've got it there. It's got proposed. The ones you come to talk about. Oh, God, what have I said? Well, I, I think that the next move really would be to apply the criteria that was yeah. the original one yeah. that was um, that, you know, used to decide which we deleted and yeah. which we didn't. We've got to give these the same criteria as what we did before. Or we go back to the beginning and we look at all of them, or we sit here and say... Let's forget it. We never made no choices. Let's, let's, excuse me. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. Or leave it. The beginning was, we listed the whole lot and we ticked them off one by one when they didn't fit the criteria that was given. Yep, yep. Let's all go back to day one. The, actually, uh, can, I just come in, can I just come in here? That decision was taken. You can't go back on it. Because they're, they're, they've, they've um, you know, there are members that have called these forward to review them. May, may, I, may I actually try and seek some illumination as to why these have been brought back at this point then? Would you... um, so, councillors, these four were brought back because I think it was two councillors. Was it councillor... Fairmore, Councillor Fissenden. Yeah. And that was part of the early decision. Yeah, and that was part of the early decision. It was requested these four required further information and be brought back. This committee agreed that they be brought back to this meeting, and that's why they're here before you, because this committee made a decision that you would bring them back and consider these four. Councillor Vizard, oh, okay, sorry. and um, then, oh, sorry, uh, Councillor English, um, and then Councillor Garton. So, Councillor Vizard has, some, you're, you're happy to, for Councillor English to keep going, and then yourself, and then Councillor Garton. Thank you. Leaving aside my my belief that this that this whole. Um, study has gone off piste from the original intention which was not to actually carry out a cull but was to modernize systemize and bring up to date um, we, we have ended up with effectively what is a cull based on certain criteria well okay i don't agree with those criteria but what's been done has been done so i can't we can't go back over this but what we have is some points have been raised on these particular issues 
Now, the fact of the matter is that we had a scrutiny review carried out and chaired very admirably by um, Val Springett, on which, which, in, which looked at the Borough Council's links with public transport organisations, including the Quality Bus Partnership and the Rail Partnerships, and concluded that the Borough Council have made a very significant error when our membership of those organisations have been terminated. And that scrutiny review, which went through and was a, the Cabinet and was approved and agreed by the Cabinet member at the time, and the full Cabinet, recommended that the membership of these organisations, including these three bodies, the Quality Bus Partnership and the two rail bodies, be retaken up. That and that has happened, and as a result of that, a number of very productive things have happened, including discussions on reintroducing and providing a bus service which goes directly from the town centre to the crematorium, for example, and some very productive discussions with Arriva around particular bus service options. Councillor Burton, who represents the, the council on that, has played a very significant part. Now, in terms of the, the two rail bodies, they have provided very significant input to the council's responses to the two key franchise documents and consultations that are very important for this council and everyone who lives in Maidstone. Uh, all it costs us is the time for members of this council to actually go to those meetings. If, those, if these bodies do not meet the criteria, then the criteria are wrong because we are getting significant input and help with dealing with public transport issues on the railway and the quality bus and on bus issues from these three groups. And on the final one, Collis Millennium Green, there is uh, that costs nothing except the time of, of borough councillors to be involved in it. It is a project that depends. Yes, it won't cost the council anything at all, except it will become impossible to run a significant part in Maystone. What it will do is make it very difficult for the Millennium Green to continue to operate because it was set up with the assumption that there would be that, that input from the borough council and what we haven't considered as part of this whole process is how it looks from the organisations. Because if you look at a lot of the organisations we cut out of, their charity deeds, that the way they're run, specifies Maidstone Borough Council participation in those organisations. You take that out, it doesn't affect us, but it affects their ability to run and operate. So all I would say is this whole area has been fraught with difficulties. In my personal opinion, the best solution going forward is for all of these outside bodies to essentially be determined whether they exist or not, or their appointments are, are, are carried out or not, should be determined by the relevant service committee that is in a better position to understand the needs and demands of, of, of that particular um, part of the borough council's life. But that's just my personal opinion. And what I would say is there is still a significant debate going on. And I would say that given that this debate is far from resolved overall, that these four bodies should, for now, I'm not necessarily saying forever, but for now should continue to have council participation in them pending the overall resolution of, of the overall debate. So essentially, I think in some ways, I am agreeing with Councillor Ring um, within the, the overall context. But here and now, here and now, the specific recommendation I would make is that we make no change at all to, to, to these bodies' status for the moment and that we, pending the overall discussion, uh, um, which will, which will end up going to full council and where will be a very significant debate on the whole subject. Thank you. Well, that, the, it, we're only talking about four tonight. Yes, so, I know. That's um, what I'm saying. I, I think we should keep these four yeah. as they exist for the moment. 
Do we have a second? Is that seconded? Councillor, I think there's still a bit of discussion on this yet. So. Councillor Bizarre was next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you, um, I apologise for that. But then it's Councillor Perry and Councillor Garton. Oh, sorry. On, then. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just, I, I understand what was going on and maybe it does need to go back to be totally reviewed again. But the concern that I've got, if we look at Agenda item 14, we've actually got a very, very solid commitment there. And when you look at the risk factor on it, on four, we need to make a decision on that outside body tonight. <coughs> Councillor Perry. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, on the point that Councillor Councillor English made about scrutiny and cabinet. Well, I can think of one or two other decisions that have been changed that were passed very happily by scrutiny and cabinet. And so uh, I'm not too impressed with that um, reasoning. Um, I do feel we're moving the goalposts, actually, a little bit. Um, I thought we made a decision. And um, we seem now to say, oh, well, we don't really like parts of it, so we all come back and have another look. Well, if we do that, I have no problem with that. But... It's got, we've got to look at, as Councillor Ring quite rightly said, to be fair, we've got to go for the whole lot. And we can't then suddenly leave some in because we think, oh, well, yeah, we don't want to take them out at this stage. We either do it properly or we don't. And um, I believe we should, we should review the whole everything and go back and have another look at, at it. Because if you don't like the criteria, then and you want to change the criteria, then you've got to apply the new criteria to all the bodies. You can't just not, you know, apply to a few and not to the others. So either you go back and re-look at the criteria, which seems to be a logical thing if you want to do, and then people are unhappy with that, fine. I, I don't have a, necessarily a problem with that. Uh, and then you agree that criteria, and then you apply it to all the bodies. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, we're in this sort of half and half Situation, and I don't think we sh should, and I do not think we should be leaving these in because they didn't meet the original criteria. So until we actually meet, till we please, Councillor, until we meet the new criteria, if we do agree a new criteria, then these bodies should not be in. It's as simple as that. So we go back and look at the whole lot again, and, and look at uh, we establish new criteria if we want to agree that, and then we look at the whole bodies again. That seems to be the logical way of doing it. Thank you. Actually, can I let yeah. Councillor Garton yeah, come in, course, and course. then we'll yes, come back course. to that. Councillor Garton. Since Councillor English question probably relates directly to what uh, Councillor Parridge said, I would like to give way to Councillor English. Yeah. Okay, um, Councillor English. Um, unless I've got this wrong, um, if we went back to the beginning, I'm not saying well, we could but, um, because of the previous decision, but if we did um, within the rules, uh, wouldn't that not sort of presuppose that everything, not just these four, is in everything? Yeah, can, can I get some legal advice here on, on this particular um, Chair, if I may just provide some clarification. Um, where the committee has made a decision at an earlier meeting, that decision has been made and um, actions were required in accordance with the, the, the recommendations at that time and the decision was made. This, the, the, the recommendation that is to be considered today is as suggested. So either... Um, committee members um, resolve to accept the recommendation or disapproves um, what's been recommended in this report. But to say that we've got to revisit the initial recommendation, it compromises the process of this committee. Otherwise, at a later date, a, a different view may be taken regarding 
the decision that you are making today. And we could go on ad infinitum. So, um, yeah, well, I've advised the chair that the comments should be noted, the observations that members make will be noted, and a vote be taken on the recommendation. And, you know, we, 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 we tally up the numbers and, and proceed further. Um, but to review the, to, to, to go back to the original um, decision would compromise the process, that I would suggest, Chair. <coughs> Thank you very much. Councillor Perry. I'm sorry to drag this on a bit, but I, I'm slightly confused and I, I need, need to deconfuse myself, if I may. Um, the decision, as I understood it, excluded these four. Is that right? That was the original decision. Yes. So why you're saying we're compromising that decision, but I don't see that because that, they were excluded. If that's the case, then we don't go back to them. Um, the process that was followed, because I remember it very clearly, is we went through every single committee and applied the criteria that this committee agreed. Mm -hmm. So you applied the criteria, you went through each, every single one and voted. We had a number that were outstanding, so there were a number where people said, I don't have enough information to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Those come back to the next meeting. At that next meeting, it was then decided there were a further four from the last meeting that needed to be decided on again, and these are those these four. Are the these are those four. Against the criteria. Yes. Yes. So the committee themselves, so the committee, two, two councillors said these four they didn't think had been considered properly. They requested they be reviewed again, and this committee agreed, you agreed, they would be considered again, and that is what was before you. It's not the whole review, it is just those four committees. The majority was it come back. If I, if I recall correctly, each one of those uh, on the list was voted upon yes. um, it, whether everyone was yeah but there was no discussion on, on these these yeah but that that is exactly what happened yes. that evening yes. Okay. Well, I don't think there's going to be any meeting of minds between the two sides of this argument, so discussing it all night isn't going to get us anywhere. Um, I, 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 I would like to put on record that I don't think, the, that I think that it does need re-examining because the criteria in no way assesses the value of the organisations. It just, it just was a box-sticking exercise of the worst kind. But, but we, are where we, we are where we are. Um, I, I, I've moved a recommendation that we keep these four pending the, fight, the debate of full council, which will almost certainly um, make a decision. Um, well, it, yes, that's where it goes. Full council will decide whether or not the recommendations of this committee to commit suicide um, 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 on some major issues and say, and say, say we're not going to engage with, with public transport bodies and other things. The council will decide, you know, whether the recommendations are as barking mad as I think they are or whether, you, whether they're right. Democracy Committee does not have the final say you recommend. Council will decide. All I'm saying is that it, there is a very strong argument on the facts of what these bodies produce to leave it until for full council to make the decision on whether we, they're kept in or not and to keep them in for the moment pending that discussion.
Okay, thank you. Can I have some clarification uh, from Mrs. Woodhouse, please? Um, yes, so the criteria that was applied when we went through the outside bodies, just to refresh people. So if you go to Appendix A of your report, that's where you'll find all the criteria we looked at when we were looking at each outside body. Then at the meeting, it was decided to take three criteria in particular and apply those. So the first one was, is this an appointment to a strategic body and or is there a statutory requirement? So that's your third column along. The second criteria is, does the council provide funding to this body? Is it of a significant level? Is a member appointment essential to oversee the funding? So that's your next criteria that's applied. And the third criteria was, is there a legal requirement for a council appointment if a charitable trust? So they're the three criteria. And if, if it met any one of those criteria, it was deemed to be appropriate, but it was still down to the committee to vote. So the committee took a vote. They used that criteria to inform their voting and the committee voted on each item. So if you are reviewing these four, that is the criteria you should apply to be consistent with your previous work. Councillor English. Right, first of all, the, uh, any, uh, I would argue that bus services and train services in the borough are a strategic issue. That's, but I would say, and, and it's impossible to say, and it really is wrong to say that or not, but I really think it's barking mad to assess our membership of organisations on the basis of whether or not they, right, <clears throat> they are things we're paying for. Right, I would point out that Tunbridge and Morlin and Medway Council do make significant financial contributions to, to those two rail bodies, but the, the fact of the matter is the, the value of this org these organisations comes out in the information um, that, that goes to and from those bodies, it's, <coughs> which is free to us. And the, the fact that we're basically saying, oh no, we don't want this information, we don't want to be part of the discussions on rail and train services because we're not paying for it, is a pretty barking mad argument and shouldn't be followed. But, and finally, and yes, in terms of the Collis Millennium Green Trust, which is not a charity, but um, there are many trusts in, in Maystone of which we do not have a legal obligation to, to be part of that, but unlike some others, like Howard Park Nature Reserve, where it comes out of a planning committee decision on the and, and, the, and deeds have been signed. But it would be rather, but it is a free part, it is a tripartite arrangement which depends on there being three legs of that stool. So I think, unfortunately, perhaps with the best will in the world, the criteria are, unfortunately, rather restrictive. So all I'm, I'm not saying that at the end of the day, we, we might not take a different decision um, if we went through this whole process again. Or, or that full cap, but I'm, I'm fairly certain of, that, you know, that well, I know that procedurally, whatever decision this committee takes, that wouldn't be the final decision because your recommendations go to have to go elsewhere. But um, the, 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 all I'm saying is do not rush to judgment because it, it, it will be a hard thing to say, to, to explain why at a time when rail services and bus services are much in the public eye, why the council has said we're not wanting to be involved in these discussions any further? It's kind of a very hard thing to explain. Hey, th thanks very much for that. I, I think um, I think we've, we've talked this through pr pretty well. I mean, there are four um, outside bodies on this um, agenda there, and I, I think. Um, to be fair to each one of them, I think we should take a vote on each one of them. Um, does anybody, does that proposal get seconded? Yeah, thank you. So that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll um, start with, um, the, bearing in mind this will come, come go to full council for review anyway, so these are the four that were left off it, but the, the College Millennium Green Trust, um, though, I mean, it meets the, all the criterion within um, the criteria. So 
Um, can we take a vote on that as to whether we do put that forward? Going to take a vote? Vote. vote? To keep... Vote. To retain it. Sorry? I wish to note that democracy is just dropped in my eyes down to the bottom. This is quite important that we make here, and I know we go to full council, and, and I think that's right. But at the end of the day, I take umbrage, serious umbrage, about saying that it was done willy-nilly and thingy. The willy-nilly in the umbrage was the meetings you had after the meeting. And we never, we never made horrible statements about any of these ones. Right, no, we Where we put them out, we thought about it, we could only go on the information that we got. It is a pity that people with passion, including David Burton, didn't come the night of the committee to speak on it. And I think if you ask one of my members, I actually said, I'm surprised that uh, Clive is in here. And now we get kicked in the teeth now. So you do okay. your vote, but I will not be voted because you pushed bureaucracy out of the window. Well, we, we've been given a job to review these, um, these four um, outside bodies, and I think we should do that now, um, one by one. And um, So I'm, I'm going to say the Collis Millennium Green, can we take a vote on... Whoops, who's got a phone going? Um, I'll take a, um, a vote on Collis Millennium Green. Do we retain it? Those four? It's those against. Those abstaining. Abstaining. Okay, that, that one's carried. carried. Medway Valley Line Steering Group. Those four keeping that on. And only I declared my interest for, uh, yeah. bit earlier and I think it's appropriate that I don't vote. Okay, so that's four for it. Those against. Those abstaining. Three. Four. 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 Sorry, four. Um, the Kent Community Rail Partnership. Those four. Those against, those abstaining, three. And the final one is the Quality Bus Partnership. Um, those four for it. <laughs> those against. Those abstaining, three. Thank you very much. Uh, that's, um, that motion is carried. And um, let's move on to item 14 on this agenda, which is nominations to an outside body, which is the Upper Medway Dr Internal Drainage Board. Council. On the last item, may I quickly ask a question, because on the night I was uh, quite personally involved with the AONB unit, was that on the following meeting then agreed that that was a strategic body? Yeah. There's, there's nothing left outstanding. Be, because that was supposed to be brought back as well. 
by, by the committee. Uh, I was not at the following meeting because I only visited as a visiting member at the initial meeting in October. I can confirm it was brought back and it, it was voted on. So yes, it did come back. Thanks very much for that clarification. As I say, we're on, on now item 14, um, nominations to the board of the inter, um, Upper Medway Internal Drainage Board. Um, right, find the item. Okay, so this report before you requests that consideration be given to two nominations that we've since received since this report uh, was published. Um, there are two vacancies at present and the board are expected to meet this month to consider their um, council tax preset. So it's important that obviously that the council is represented. Uh, an email was sent around to all group leaders asking for nominations and we did have two back. Uh, Councillor Harper and Councillor Perry, I think, is going to nominate somebody else. Not you. <laughs> Councillor Perry. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, Chairman, members. Um, yes, I did nominate. I nominated myself, yes, <laughs> which is an interesting concept. But um, um, Councillor Round, who has been uh, one of our representatives, is happy to continue. So I would like to nominate councillor round rather than myself that's okay yeah, councillor english just because it's been moved from the floor i think technically that needs a second and i'd be very happy to second councillor round's nomination thank you very much for that we, shall we, uh, no more <laughs> nominations, shall we go to a vote on that? So those four councillor round and, and councillor Harper, I think we do have to do them separately. So, um, so those four councillor round to sit on that. And. Those for Councillor Harper. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Harper is... Uh, uh, oh, yes, sorry. Those against. <laughs> Those abstaining. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll... Uh, Thank you for that. So we'll... Um, uh, counts, councillors Round and um, councillors Harper are actually um, voted onto the uh, Upper Medway Internal Drainage Board. <laughs> Thank you very much, members. Yeah, the meeting is duly closed. <laughs>